Aloha! Today I'm going to show how I make my own Thai curry, fresh Thai curry. And I really enjoy Thai cooking. It's very healthy. And um, I'm uh, fortunate to have uh, uh, met and worked with some of the best uh, Thai cooks in Hawaii, as well as in Thailand. And um, all of the ingredients in Thai cooking, or at least the traditional Thai cooking, has uh, very healthy and, and medicinal uh, benefits. At least I believe that. And we're going to be making this today uh, with uh, the help of our trusty Omega B2400 2 horsepower uh, blender. And I've gathered some, uh, some of the essential ingredients uh, that uh, we're going to be using today. Now there's uh, several types of Thai curries, uh, but uh, the ones that we're primarily going to be focusing on today are the red, the green, and the yellow. And we're going to be making a variation of the yellow. Now the red and the green curries are, uh, are made up of different types of chili peppers. Of either a green or a red pepper and they're usually not hot uh, they just give flavor and color to the curry and then with the yellow curry um, they add uh, turmeric and so I have the turmeric here today and I like the turmeric because I use I use turmeric in a lot of cooking because it's anti-inflammatory and uh, it also has many other different uh, 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 healthy benefits and so I like adding that to uh, the curry. Um, so uh, what I've done here is I've gathered all my ingredients and um, there's a couple ingredients that like for instance onion. I'm going to use a whole onion. Normally uh, the Thais would use, uh, uh, Thai chefs would use shallots and uh, but the other ingredients are, are pretty much what they would use and uh, that includes uh, the kefir lime leaf and I've got about two cups of kefir lime. I have two heads of garlic. I have a few hot, small Hawaiian hot chili peppers, but just a few, but uh, eight or ten just to give it a little bit of hotness and then I have uh, some red uh, chili uh, pepper this is could be paprika uh, or other uh, types of curry now I didn't have fresh uh, peppers uh, so I used a dried uh, pepper so this could be like a paprika or other types of, uh, of chili uh, or red pepper that uh, isn't hot. You don't want it too hot. Um, usually you want to add your, your hotness to the dish as you're making it depending on the, you know, what people like to eat. Another important ingredient uh, is the galanga. This is the Thai uh, ginger and it has a distinct flavor. Just as the, the kefir lime has a distinct flavor, the uh, galanga gives a very distinct flavor. It's uh, very similar to uh, uh, to the ginger that that uh, you would normally buy in the store, except uh, uh, that it does have a very distinct flavor to it. But as far as the um, healthy benefits, it's good for the stomach, uh, it's soothing, and uh, it has some other really good properties to it. I'm going to be using about ten lemongrass stalks. Lemongrass is another very distinct flavor. I'm going to use about a half a cup of dried shrimp. I'm going to use a tablespoon of peppercorns. And as I said earlier, this is gonna uh, this is this is uh, turmeric. This is what the turmeric looks like, and I just scraped it off with a little bit of uh, with a uh, spoon. 
and I've used about four, I'm going to use about four large fingers of the, um, of the turmeric. And I'm going to use this uh, fairly large chunk of uh, the galanga root here. And I may scrape off parts of this as well with a spoon, certain parts. I'm not too concerned about it because these are, these are organic uh, ingredients. And I talk a lot about using organic ingredients, um, not only for uh, the uh, aspects of not getting um, toxins into your food, but also just the, the, um, uh, the building up of the, of the soil, which I believe in. Uh, there's a lot to organics uh, that a lot of people may not know about, but uh, growing organic also means building the soil, building the probiotics of the soil that helps the, the uh, plants take up nutrients, which then we consume so we get a greater benefit. So with that, I'm going to cut all of these uh, ingredients up because a lot of these ingredients, including the galanga, um, are fibrous. And so what happens is, um, if you just were to just break this up, break these up, put them in the blender, the blender is very powerful. It will blend it together. But what happens is it, it kind of beats the, the pulpiness uh, of these ingredients, um, but leaves the long fiber. And I don't want that. I want this to be... Um, I want this to, to, to not have the fibrous uh, or the long fibrous content. So I'm going to cut all this up and then I'm going to blend it together. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then pretty soon I'll, I'll show you just how easy it is to take these ingredients, mix them all together into this fairly large batch and then uh, have a basis for uh, Thai curry paste that we can then use for uh, Thai curries, add coconut milk and uh, other ingredients. I also uh, have this, uh, I have some um, some fish sauce, which is uh, usually an anchovy uh, uh, sauce, which uh, is usually salt and, uh, and fermented anchovy, uh, anchovies. And uh, this I'll use uh, in the place of using salt. And uh, this also gives our, a really nice flavor uh, to the, um, to the uh, curry paste. So uh, I'll just go ahead now and cut all this up and uh, I'll be back with you in a moment. I cut everything with a cleaver and I find that having a good cleaver is essential for doing this type of work, especially when you're doing the galanga. It can be a little bit harder uh, than ginger and, and other types of uh, root, uh, root vegetables. And so let's go over this one more time and uh, let me put this out of the way. Uh, you'll notice that I've cut up the, um, the lemongrass and uh, I've cut the stems off uh, or the, the, the more fibrous part. And I, I'm going to use this for making tea. It makes a, makes a very good tea. But the more fleshy part, the tender part, I, I'm using in this uh, curry paste. You can see we're making quite a bit of curry paste. Um, I'm going to uh, freeze this and I'm going to have some of it in the refrigerator and then freeze the rest. Um, there's the uh, kefir lime leaf chopped up. Again, I'm chopping this up so it, uh, it breaks up the fibers so it doesn't just separate in the, in the blender. This is a very powerful blender but still it will kind of separate and I don't want that to happen. Uh, I want it to be a little finer. Um, here I have the garlic, about a, uh, two heads of garlic. You can do uh, a head and a half. Um, you can vary your recipes. It depends on your, your own preferences. Here's the galanga. I cut the galanga up into uh, little smaller pieces. This is what I'm most concerned about, remaining fibrous. I don't. I want to break that up. And you can see that I actually, out of that approximately two pound um, piece, I, I'm using about a pound and a half. Galanga can be a lot more stronger in flavor than 
than regular ginger. So um, you might want to uh, go easy on this and see how it comes out. It, it does impart a, a very nice flavor to it, but can be overpowering. So I decided to back off a little bit on that. I have my uh, tablespoon of, of uh, black peppercorns. My onion, don't have to worry too much about the onion being cut up uh, very fine because the blender will uh, make short work of that as it will the garlic and the, uh, and the hot chili peppers. I've got my two tablespoons of red pepper. This can be cayenne or paprika, or if you're fortunate to have fresh chilies, uh, red chilies or green chilies in your area, go ahead and use that. Uh, and then here's my uh, turmeric. Okay, and another ingredient that the Thais use a lot is uh, uh, coriander root. I don't have that, but I am using this uh, turmeric to add to this, so it should be a nice flavor. And then I have my dried shrimp. I got about a half cup of that. And then I have my fish sauce. And I'm about ready to do this. And you'll see how simple it is. And it's best, you know, we're fortunate in Hawaii to have a lot of this, uh, a lot of these ingredients that grow fresh here and we can um, get uh, at the local uh, Hilo Farmers Market or uh, our local uh, uh, health food stores and, and local stores. And so we're fortunate in that way. If you don't have all of these available, use frozen or dried. Um, this will hopefully help you save a few bucks and um, and make something that's very healthy and tasty for you. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and add my ingredients. Again, uh, we'll start out with uh, we'll put in the um, put in the galanga. the onions. Peppercorns, kefir lime. It originally started out with about two cups of the loose kefir lime leaves. Want to get that all in there? Lemongrass. Turmeric, dried shrimp, about two medium um, heads of garlic, and a few of the very hot chili peppers. And then a couple tablespoons uh, of another red chili pepper. Then I'm going to add about a half cup of the um, of the fish sauce. This will impart a, a salty flavor to it and a fish type of flavor. Maybe not quite half a cup. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and blend this up. And the uh, Omega is a very strong um, blender, so uh, should make pretty short work of this. Using the pulse uh, feature. I'm going to use a spoon to push the ingredients down further towards the blade and then make sure that that's out of there. Pulse again.
I'm going to continue to blend this mixture down until the pieces get smaller and smaller and I'll need to keep pushing these larger pieces down into the blade um, but I'll make sure to turn off the blender before I start doing that. I want to uh, jam the, um, the wooden spoon into a moving blade. Um, as I do this, I am going to add olive oil. You can use olive oil or coconut oil, I find, and uh, the best. And that will uh, moisturize the mix and lubricate it so that you are able to actually get a nice homogeneous uh, mix of paste. So that's what I'm going to do now for the next uh, few minutes. Okay, we're back. That took about five minutes to do all the grinding, and uh, I didn't want to subject you to all that. Uh, but uh, I do want to do some review on what I did, and then uh, uh, and also a few safety tips. Okay, one of the things that uh, that I did is. Um, is when I removed the top, I did uh, push the ingredients down into the blade. And that'll happen, uh, you'll need to do that, and uh, you need to make sure that the blade is off when you're pushing down with the spoon. You don't want to do this with the unit on. This is a very powerful unit. The Omega B2400 is a commercial kitchen unit. It's two horsepower and is very powerful. Uh, if you inadvertently put this spoon down in there, you're going to get a uh, um, you're going to get splinters of wood in your in your uh, curry paste. So and and if you're using anything harder, you could damage the blade. So always, I know it's tempting to keep doing it while the motor's running, but don't use uh, or turn off the unit while you're pushing things down. Also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I use olive oil coconut oil and sometimes sesame oil uh, when I'm creating curries. Now, um, it's important that as you're mixing the ingredients together that you use a little bit of olive oil, and in my case I use olive oil or, or coconut oil to um, help to homogenize and blend this mixture together. All right, now, the other thing, this is a variable speed unit. And I can turn off the unit, but still change the speeds, and then turn it on. When I first started, though, I, used the, I turned off the unit and used the pulse. That breaks up the hard, piece, the hard large pieces of the uh, root and other ingredients. So I would use this pulse to kind of break things up. Then I switched over, started with a lower setting, turned this on, and then varied the speed as things started to mix. So that as I poured in the oil, I uh, reduced the speed so that it didn't cavitate, which means create an air pocket um, and then uh, and then I blended until I, I got a really nice mix. And now I'm going to show you what we ended up with. It's a paste. This is a curry paste. And uh, this is how it should be. Uh, you only need like a couple of tablespoons uh, per, uh, per curry dish. Uh, so I'll mix this with uh, coconut oil. Uh, or olive oil and then with uh, coconut milk and then my other spices more vegetables whatever protein fish uh, chicken or or uh, shellfish or whatever it is that I want to make or, or vegetarian style and um, right now this is a very strong taste uh, somewhat salty but as I said this goes a long way in a dish you just add enough to give you the base taste. So hopefully this gives you enough information to go ahead and try your own. And if you don't have a commercial grade blender, you can always use less ingredients and create uh, a nice uh, chili uh, or a uh, curry chili uh, paste. 
And um, just keep in mind that, again, you can vary the ingredients. If you want to add more garlic or less garlic, add more fish sauce, less fish sauce. In this case, I added the turmeric. That gives it the yellow color, especially when you mix the coconut milk. If I didn't use that, it would be more of a traditional uh, red curry. If I had green peppers, uh, green chili peppers, uh, then it would be more of a green color. All right. So go ahead and try this, and uh, until the next time, aloha.